I don't know. Do you have phone numbers for all your sources on the hack, haven't we? Could somebody wants to do some kind of follow-up story? Screenwriter Billy Ray's directorial debut looks at the exploits of former journalist Stephen Glass. The production, based on a Vanity Fair article, examines the eccentric writer's fall after he's exposed for his fabricated news stories. You thought about the impact. I didn't do anything wrong. You saw my notes. Everything was in there. Reports say the real-life Glass, who declined to appear in the movie as himself, is currently working for a law firm in the U.S. But there is one thing in the story that checks out. What's that? There does appear to be a state in the Union named Nevada. This is a big story, a major story. You understand that? We have got, got to get down there. Based on a book by investigative newsman Sidney Shanberg, The Killing Fields finds the on-screen persona of the veteran journalist reporting from the heart of Cambodia amid the Civil War. Shattered by war. Actor Hangen Gore, who won an Oscar for his role in the motion picture, was a real-life survivor of the Cambodian labor camps. After what the Khmer Rouge have been through, I don't think they're going to be exactly affectionate toward Westerners. The church found out about it and did nothing. We haven't committed any long-term investigative resources to the case. The star-studded award winner Spotlight brings to the big screen the investigations of the Boston Globe staff, which helped uncover a sexual abuse scandal involving members of the Catholic Church. It also should be noted that a decade before the release of the picture, the Massachusetts-based newspaper won the Pulitzer Prize in public service for its courageous and comprehensive coverage of the subject. Poor kid from a poor family, and when a priest pays attention to you, it's a big deal. White House. Howard Hunt, please. He might be Mr. Colson's office. Who's Charles Colson? Did you know uh, Howard Hunt? The last instalment in director Alan J. Pakula's paranoia trilogy of films, All the President's Men, retells one of the most publicised scandals in political history. The movie, trailing journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein at the dawn of the Watergate crisis, instantly received global acclaim. Legend has it that lead actor Robert Redford bought the rights to the source material book for $450,000 to be made into a $5 million feature starring himself. Control the investigation. I, I don't want to say any more, okay? You've been threatened if you tell the truth. Is there a cover up? Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theatre. Partly inspired by William Randolph Hearst, director Orson Welles' Hollywood debut finds a news reporter trying to uncover the secrets of a late media mogul. The innovative epic is regarded by many filmmakers and critics as the best film ever made. During its theatrical run, Citizen Kane was the target of the Forbes list topping Hearst family, who tried to limit the motion picture's release. And it was only recently that a family member openly talked about the ever-enduring classic. At a recent screening, William Hurst Jr. admitted to appreciating the film, but added that it was never spoken about in their household. Erskine Sanford. So does Paul. Paul. Paul Stewart, everybody. Citizen Kane is a modern American story about a man called Kane, Charles Foster Kane.